Hey guys, it's Dr. Mackey. It is June 12th. Uh, This is uh, policy number 8030, discomfort or pain of suspected cardiac origin. This policy is pretty popular, gets used a lot. So I wanted to spend a couple of minutes about what does it mean? What does pain or discomfort of suspected cardiac origin mean? So that's variable. Uh, some people feel burning. Some people feel pressure. Some people feel tightness. Um, if you use the word pain, sometimes patients don't pick up on it and they don't feel it as pain. They feel it as something else. Uh, I've seen a lot of medics push on the chest and say, well, if that reproduces the pain, then that's not cardiac origin. And that is not true. Uh, so, But most people that have got cardiac type pain have something else going along with it. They've got like weakness or shortness of breath, sweating, um, lightheadedness. Uh, so if you've got pain that you think is cardiac, look for something else to go with it as well. Some of the pain is exertional, uh, some of it's not. Uh, And if they've had a prior heart attack and they use the words, this feels like my prior heart attack, then those are obviously good good cues to pick pick up on as well. So uh, the key changes in this policy that started in July 1st of 2020, I'll point out here, and some of them are obvious, some of them you'd blow right past if we didn't talk about them. So let's start with the policy. So on the BLS side of things, aspirin administration is uh, is in the BLS arena now. It was moved in the BLS arena uh, by the state probably, I don't know, about a year ago. Uh, so our EMTs can now administer 324 milligrams of chewable aspirin. And there's a reminder here that current anticoagulation therapy is not a contraindication. So if they're on Pradaxa or Coumadin and they say, oh, I can't take that because uh, because I've got, uh, I'm already on anticoagulants, that's not a reason. The only reason why you shouldn't give them aspirin is if they're allergic to it. This is very important. If you don't administer aspirin, you, we have to document it. So that is a part that does get forgotten quite frequently. Uh, So if aspirin is not given, put it in the PCR. Okay, moving into the ALS side of things, these are kind of the more obvious ones. Uh, Of course, uh, we're we're looking for a STEMI. That's, That's the whole reason why we're doing what we're doing. STEMIs are less than 10% of all types of cardiac chest pain. There's unstable angina and stable angina uh, that are um, other parts. And then end STEMIs or non-ST elevation MIs is another section of acute coronary syndrome. But we are looking for the STEMIs. Uh, so don't forget about pulse ox, obviously cardiac monitor. We're going to acquire a 12 lead. And we're looking at the computer interpretation of the 12 lead. But Here's what has really been a focus. A single high quality 12 lead obtained while the patient is still is the absolute most preferable. So you look at the con- computer interpretation. If it, if it is a STEMI, they're going to be going to the closest designated STEMI center. Um, if you're at the airport, it's going to be UC Davis or Mercy General. And so we're going to be transmitting that 12 lead as well. If it is a positive for STEMI, we are going to transmit that 12 lead. And then we're going to send a copy with the patient as well. All right. After the 12 lead, um, there's a comment about nitroglycerin. This is the big change. Uh, So if the 12 lead is consistent with acute STEMI, we're not giving nitro. That's for all acute STEMIs. That's not just the right-sided STEMIs. That's not inferior infarcts, all STEMIs. Uh, And the reason for that that was discussed at the county meetings are is because there's never been a clinical benefit uh, in outcomes for patients receiving nitroglycerin, but there is potential detriment in giving nitroglycerin if the person's blood pressure drops significantly. So 12 lead says STEMI, no nitro. All right, so we're going to give them 0.4 milligrams. We can repeat it every five minutes uh, for blood pressures greater than 90. And then there's a comment down here also that um, uh, you titrate it. Uh, You don't need to wait to get a vascular access. Of course, we all know about the contraindications to nitro with the PDE5 inhibitors. Um, But here's another thing also. If you've given uh, three nitros and they're not getting any relief, 
um, or if nitro is contraindicated, you can go to the pain medications. And remember, uh, getting back to somatic pain and visceral pain, this is a type of visceral pain. So morphine is or morphine or fentanyl are going to be the best. We carry fentanyl. So that's going to be the best one in this case. Okay, guys, that solves this one. And we'll see you on the next one.